game features a team that can get it done on the ground. The Bills are top 10 in rushing TDs, and they'll go up against a Colts defense that needs to be ready for that. With that, let's send you up to Snowy Orchard Park outside of Buffalo, where we say hello to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Gentlemen, all right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everybody. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you take a look at the Bills entering play here. They come in off a loss last time out, but they've been playing better than 500 ball the last couple months, five wins in their last eight games. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, they've been cooking these last couple months, winners of seven of their last eight games. And if you extrapolate that out to a full season, they'd be 14-2. and two. And anyone in the NFL today would sign up for that. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in Week 13. This will be fielded at the 6. Spinning past him. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. Shift together here from the D line. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, it certainly appears that they had a pretty good formula how to combat waiting around all day to play a night game. Came right out, smacked them, and gained big yardage because it's tough for a coach. How much time do you spend with a team? How much time do you meet? How often do you actually eat meals? Do you get them out of the hotel? It's a tough, tough task to have them ready to play a night game when they've had to sit around all day and usually watch other people get ready to play as well. Now back to throw. And here's the offense today that hopes to get off to a strong start. And on second and ten now. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. And here are the defensive starters. In your old position, you get to talk about the secondary. The best athletes on the field, Brandon. Ah, debatable. Well, we'll see how this goes today. I love, I love the way you put my guys down. But you know this. They've got to cover, and they have to tackle. They have a heck of a task in front of them in this game. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion as we just saw there, that's winning football. The Bills send the punter out. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. And to give this time to the tailback. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. To me, that's a superior play by the backer because he was allowed to, I think, run free on it and make that play. His defensive linemen, they covered things down for him because offensive guys, the linemen, what they're trying to do, as you know, 
is block the guy at the point of attack and then climb to the next level and get the linebacker. And you're not allowed to climb. You got a free hit. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. Well, we, we thought these two defenses, they might come to play. One has already come to play here, a safety for the opening points of the game. Brandon, let's file this play away because if it turns out to be a tight game, who knows? This could wind up being the difference. Yeah, this is taken at the 23. Fights off another. I think the second tackler would have learned from the first. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, right, two to the Three, right. 39. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And a throw right sideline is complete. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Gun. They'll look to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Pass incomplete. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Five receivers in the game, four of them to the left side. Out of the gun now on third down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. That was a nice catch, and if the goal was to get into field goal range, it certainly appears that they accomplished that. Well, and sometimes that's what you dial up in these situations, right, when you want three? Well, if the goal was to get into field goal territory, even though it'll be a long attempt, I think they accomplished that. And sometimes you have plays for that. It's not always a first down when you want three, get a little bit closer, making an easier shot. Yeah, sometimes you just have to concede to the defense and they know what you're trying to get done and to try and get any more than that is almost folly. Take what you can get, maybe have an opportunity to put three points on the board. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And now we get our first look at a guy who's been around the block a time or two. He will not be rattled today. And that changes things for a defensive coordinator because normally when you get the young guys, you get the rookies, you throw all the exotic blitzes at them and looks they haven't seen. But this guy, he's seen it all. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A big play there out of the running game. 31 yards. All right, I've got to be careful here, all right? He's on the plus side of 30. There may be a little gray in the beard, 
But that's not slowing down the speed as far as he's concerned. What are you saying? I'm on the plus side of 30. Well, if you're on the plus side of 30, you don't know what I'm on the plus <laughs> side of. All I know is that run right there let us know there's still some life in those legs. Absolutely. Still got a lot of life left in those legs. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. While we know that the identity of this offense is to throw the ball, they've got to run it every so often, and for no other reason than to tamp down the pass rush. They can't let them just tee off and get to their quarterback. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Here's Luck. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker, complete. It goes for a gain of 10, and it's a first down. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot, and they connected there and picked up a first down. And the quarterback, he's got some big threats at wideout. And they seem to get bigger all the time, don't they, Brandon? Every time I look out and watch a game, we're getting these bigger, more athletic, acrobatic receivers. We have some today. On second down, here's Locke. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Some think that teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them. And they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Uh-oh, Charles, now you get to talk about your old spot, the secondary, very key here in this one. You have to cut me off because, you know, I'll talk about them all game long. Love to see those guys match up and challenge the best wide receivers. Ten yards still left on second down. And they'll go on the ground. And he cuts it out to the sideline. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A great effort there. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Colts have taken the lead. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, Yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit, but for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken from the seven. <laughs> and he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And a look here at the Colts' defense. And even though that last drive yielded points, it was a long field goal, so they probably weren't too upset about it. Although here, obviously, they'd like to give up zero. Of course. That's the goal each and every time out. But when, when they make that type of a field goal that long, you almost give them a little nod of respect to the kicker, like, congratulations. But you do feel pretty good about not giving up anything big. Yeah, and we'll see if they can not give up anything big on this drive. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll make it second down. Right, I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. 
And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. Third down and three. They'll come out in the pistol. One quarter down here on a frigid December night. It's a tight game here early. And we're back to upstate New York after this. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They'll face a third down conversion attempt here, third and three. Watch right, watch right, watch right. Here we go, G. Let's go, Blue Landy. Blue Landy. Six. Blue Landy. Six. Six. They'll look to throw here. And he will find his man on the outside. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expecting to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Surveying the field. And he's just going to get rid of this thing to no one here. He throws it away. And now it's third. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. You know I love football. You know I love the game. I hope so. But nighttime in December, you know I'm wearing multiple coats. <laughs> so I just wonder about the guys on the field with all the great gear that they have. Do they have enough on or do they have too much on? Because sometimes that can affect you trying to carry the ball. The Bills now making their way back out onto the field. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all. But you're exactly right. They are doing their job but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You, did, <laughs> you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed that. Right. Totally missed it. Following the fumble recovery, here's Locke. And he's got his man on the comebacker. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Decent chunk of yardage still left here, second and seven. Here's Luck now on second down. And he's got his man on the out route. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? And they'll run it here. Call it no game there, and it leads to a fourth down. So on comes Cairo Santos now for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good, and that will push the lead up to five. So a good kick there, and they finish off the drive with three. And that should be the goal for an offense, finish each drive with points. So that's a nice job there to come away with at least something. That'll be taken in the end zone. 
And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Bills' offense comes out ready to take over. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because it didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. And on the ground they go with a running back. And a cut to the sideline. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. A great play there. Touchdown number 18 on the year. And the Bills have retaken the lead. And with his speed, if he just finds the slightest crease, he can take it the distance like he did there. How about the leverage up front? Offensive line out leveraging the defensive front to create that space, that crease that he was looking for. And once he hits open field, he's going to be very difficult to catch and corral. And the lead is now two. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Here's the Bills' kickoff unit out as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. Muscles him off. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Luck on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Only a yard of the pickup there, so it leaves them needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. And you would have to think an obvious passing situation here on third and nine. From the 50, it's long. He'll find his man on the comeback route, complete. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. And now a first down following that long game. So he makes the grab and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to break one tackle but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Brief break in the action here. Back to Buffalo after this. A reminder, coming up at halftime, while the two of us head for warmer areas of the press box, yes. we'll be sending you to Orlando, where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half. Send me to Orlando, please. Don't, don't be so soft. Now it's Luck off the bootleg. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. And again, this time to the tailback. And he 
gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one, you know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll fake it. Now lock. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Throwing on third down. Luck. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And now the Bills are going to stop it as they call the timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And in his 15th season, he's able to get this one to go. And they take the lead out in front at 13-12. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And here come the Bills. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. They'll look to throw here on first down. Finding time. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Holding offense. So a little grabbing there, but this time it goes against the offense for holding. It's a loss of 10 yards on the play. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. He'll get the penalty yardage back exactly. 10 yards as they'll get it to second and 10. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. They'll give it to him right up the gut. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. Fielded just inside the 30. Wow, incredible. Miss, miss. Catching backs. Second down now after the incompletion. Off of play action. Luck. 
He's going to loft one deep left side here. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. A gain of 39 that time. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Now a play fake here on first down. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. So we would have figured that one to be three points in the bank, but this game, you know, can be unpredictable at times. Yeah, he knew he needed to pull it ever so slightly to get it going in the right direction, but he seemed to put a little too much on it. And from short range, that is a bad miss for an NFL kicker. So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Bills have been solid in the secondary to this point. The Colts have struggled to throw the football two straight weeks, so that's something they'll try to fix in the second half. All right, let's get it going. Here's the first half highlights. Colts take it at the 24. Some phenomenal blocking on the run here. And he'll take it in for a touchdown. They would go ahead by two. Midway through the second quarter. Fantastic run blocking here. He'll take it in for the touchdown. That takes the lead up to two. Colts with the ball late in the half. Locks on target here. And that connection will lead to a gain of 39 yards. Score stays the same, though, as they missed the field goal. All right, thank you, Larry. Plenty of intrigue to come. A one-point game as we get set for half two. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On second down, here's Law. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. And these numbers, not what he wants to see, that's for sure. You know, last week, and we were talking about this so crisp with his reads and progressions, but I, that just hasn't been the case here in this one. Extremely sharp. We could have very well put a stopwatch to every play last week and seen everything hit right in time, right in rhythm. If it was a three-second play, he would have hit it right on time. So far in this one, everything's off just a little bit, either a little fast or a little slow. I just thought when we watched him play last week, one, two, three, bam, ball was right where we're supposed to be. Let's see if that can increase or get changed as this one goes along. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Third down and eight now. From the gun on third down, Locke. Throw to cross his body, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. He has just been a load for opposing offenses to account for now. Eight interceptions on the year. I love that number because I always think of center field. You know, when I hear eight, because that's the position you write in the scorecard in baseball. And what do good center fielders do? Take away all the alleys, right? They range deep and make a whole lot of great catches. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Here we go now. 
snap count threw the defense off. Five-yard penalty. Encroachment defense. Still first down. Now a handoff as they run left side. Oh, what a move. Call it a gain of four. Leaves them with options here on second and just a yard. For that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. They come out here in the eye. They'll set up to throw. That is caught inside the five. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Bills have once again taken the lead. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. How about the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? So they're going to go for two. They convert here for two. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I'm here my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. Now it's Luck off the bootleg. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker, complete. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense. But a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long. That he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. To throw his lock. Now a hit and lock. Lost the football. It's out. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. We've got plenty of weather here today. We've got some snow going on, and they've come out of a dome. And there have been two ways of getting ready for this. Some have said, don't worry about the weather. Just practice in your normal conditions and handle it on game day. And others have said, find some weather, find some conditions somewhere, and try and get ready. What do you think? Well, whatever the preparation there, the snow causing the fumble. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. 
Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all of his movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage, and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. Yeah, a lot of times coming in with good pay. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. A big play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Bills will add on to their lead. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. But well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, Backyard. man. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. And the lead is up to 14. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it culminates in a Bills touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big work. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Here's Locke, and he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. 22 yards on the pickup there, and that'll be good for an Indianapolis first. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. They go play action here on first down. He's got his man on the comebacker. 15 yards through the air and a first down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course, you got to keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. A couple of Bills team up to bring him down there. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because it and is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. They'll drop to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. 
It's the Bills with a lead and the football here to begin the fourth quarter. Third down, the Colts beefing up the secondary. Six defensive backs in the game. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And taken at the 46. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they wanted. Put it mildly, that is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in a good spot, great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turned the ball over. Yeah, turned the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, it went against the tendency and ran it. And boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup. And guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. And what a moment we have just witnessed. We have a new all-time passing touchdown leader. And how fortunate are we to be here to witness this in person, to see someone take their spot at the top of the list, one of the all-time great records in sports. Oh, how about this? No good. Just his second miss of the year, and our score will stay right where it is. So the lead trimmed down to eight as here comes the kickoff, and it's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case, sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Back to throw now on second and 10. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Give him six on the play. And just like that, it's third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. A great read, and it's picked off. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter, turning it over. Now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. So they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Oh, no, he lost the football. They find some open field here. 
And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. You probably talk about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. It's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. On second down, here's Luck. And he will find his man on the outside. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. Lock on third down. And he's got his man on the out route. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Now a handoff here to his running back. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top 10 units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them or do you decide to throw the ball here? And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. Six plays got him down here. This is play number seven, third and goal. Now luck on third and goal. This will be caught at about the five. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, they were successful in one sense. They completed the pass, but still leads them to a tough fourth down situation, doesn't it? It does, and the deficit more than three here at a one-score game. So the field goal, not their ideal situation. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on the play of the game now. Fourth and goal. Desperation time for Luck. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Their big tight end with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Colts are a two-point conversion away from tying this football game. And there's the touchdown, partner. We just saw it. What do you do now? Oh, yeah, of course you know what you do. You're going for two, right? I think any time you're inside of two minutes in this situation, you try for two. And remember, let's go back to training camp. Every team we talked to said they spend more time now on two-point conversion periods than they ever have before. Luck will try and throw for it. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. And the Bills are going to recover. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. The Bills offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. They have the football, they're looking good, but the lead is just two. So any mistake in a field goal can beat you. They got to be careful. And that's where it gets difficult because you don't want that to leak into your thinking. You want to play like, hey, we've got the advantage. We can close this out. Don't play from fear, and they can win this game. See if they can play. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Let's go! Green 39! Green 39! And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And, this, and another timeout taken by the Colts. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. A long way to go for the offense here on third down. A handoff as they run the counter play. 
That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. And when you're trying to set up a counter play, it's what a lot of people call an influence play. You're really hoping those defensive linemen are really agile that day. If they look, if they stayed out late the night before the game and they're not moving as fast, it's a lousy call because that means they're just gonna sit in the hole that you have to create just by the movement of your offensive line. And there they got the ball to the outer third of the field, but tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, things get stacked up in there if they don't move as well as you want them to. They're probably just trying to escape and couldn't get away. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. Extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe thinking pass. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game, and I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. He'll look to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. The 30. Pass the 20. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You were wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for Buffalo, it's an important win for their playoff hopes as they move to eight and four. And they'll get another home date next week as the Raiders will come to town. Meanwhile, for the Colts, it's a tough one to swallow as they drop back to eight and four on the year. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Heinz Field to take on the Steelers. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Bills are victorious as we say so long from Buffalo.